Hello and welcome everyone to another video of our Angular 13 live course. In the last video, if you haven't seen already, we set up the read and write part of the Firebase real-time database with our Angular application over here. If you are first time visiting our website, visiting this tutorial, let me just tell you, we are building an Angular 13 application which fetches cryptocurrencies live from an API. So all these prices that you see over here are actually live prices. We are using an API to fetch this. And then we started connecting our application to a real-time database on Firebase. And this is the overall playlist. And you have all the things like application layout, services dependency injection, mastering Angular routing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But finally, you also have the Firebase tutorial that we started because we finally need a backend, right? We need a backend to store our users, to store everything, right? And uh, we probably will need read, write, delete, update, all those good stuff. We need all the CRUD part. But this is part two of the Firebase tutorial that we are linking it with our Angular application. In the first one, uh, we did read and write. So let me just quickly do a read in front of you. And again, the focus here is not on the authentication. The focus here is just to uh, pass in, uh, to store something in the database and in the end also be able to fetch it back. So let's see if it works. So I, I enter any random password. Again, all of this website is built on YouTube live. So you can just go ahead and search anything that you don't understand what I'm doing today. Also, we have the GitHub repository with each branch containing each video and the main branch has the latest code. And also that is linked down in the description below already. So you can go ahead and check that out as well. If anything you don't understand like template driven forms, reactive forms, etc., you can go ahead and check that out. I won't cover that again. Now let's get to the good stuff today. If I click on login, you see that we are making a get request on our Firebase database, which is a real time database over here. We have three users and we should have received three users in the response. And let me zoom in for you if you can't see it. And there you go. Now it should be visible. We have three users. Each has a name, email, password, and confirm password. Again, the focus here is just to store something in the database and be able to fetch it. That's all we are trying to do today. We are not doing authentication or any other thing like that. Same way, if you go to the join, you can enter some things and then it would save the new user in the database. And I won't do that again. We'll just focus on how to fetch things with filters because that is very important, right? You won't always uh, do a select star or select all query, right? Or basically you won't always want to get everything in our database. Especially in this case, we just want to get the user that we are passing an email and password with, right? Let's say we just wanted the user whose email matches our query. How can we do that? And it's not as straightforward as we would do in other REST APIs or other databases, but the benefit of using the Firebase real-time database is tenfold because the biggest benefit is we don't have to worry about creating the backend on our own. It's already created for us. We can access that just with the help of REST API calls. So let's see how we can do that. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment down below or in the chat. We always welcome all the questions and we try to answer them all. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to see what fields we have. We have confirm password, email, name, and password. I think the email field should be perfect. So my goal is to fetch the user whose email matches the email I pass, right? And if it does, then I'll check the password against it. If everything is fine, then I'll, my goal is to redirect from this page to the home page, right? If everything passes, if everything goes well, I want to go to the home page. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, in Firebase, the way it works is you can filter data. As you can see over here, I can add those links in the description if you want. So we can filter data with the help of order by. That's the first thing we need to do. You can't filter anything unless you pass an order by. That's just how this REST API works. And then we have limit to first, limit to last, start at, end at, equal to. Now we obviously want equal to because we want all the emails that are equal to, right? We want emails that are equal to whatever we pass, equal to the email we pass, right? So we'll be using the equal to uh, key over here. And we also need to pass order by. So let's see how we can do that in Angular. But before we do that, there's something interesting. We need to also create indexes. So what the way Firebase works is, it says that you need to create an index so that it's easier to order things and it's easier to fetch things. It just creates fetching and using the database more, much more efficient, right? You probably know this or maybe you don't, 
But let me just tell you, if you add indexes, especially on the fields that are highly queried, your database and your API becomes faster by hundreds of times, right? So that is what Firebase forces us to do. And that is a good thing, right? It's not forcing us to do anything bad, it's a good thing. Now, the rule we have to add is somewhat this. First of all, we have a users table, right? So the new rule will be on the users. And in the end, we have to create an, an object like this. And inside the object, we have a key called as index on. As you can see, it's already giving me hints. Let me zoom in it for you. So index on, and then we need to give it the field we want indexes on. So it's an array. Right now, we just want index on email, and then we can focus on other things once we want. And now I will publish it. Okay, the rules are published. So now we should have an index on email. Let's check it out. If I go back to my code, there you go. We have code on the left and we have website on the right. That's perfect. The, the application is already running. So that's good as well. Let me make more space. That's perfect. Now, right now we just have a get query, right? Angular crypto demo. And now we want to add to this query itself something like something that says I want all the users ordered by. Right? So for that, I need to pass a param, an HTTP param. So how do we create a param, right? We have covered that before, but let me do it again for you. So here, this is the URL, obviously, right? I can even take this out in a variable just to make things more clear. I can say const URL equals this, obviously in a string. Let me remove the console log, we don't need it anymore. Okay, now we need to obviously pass the URL over here, otherwise things won't work. So this is just what we had before. Nothing has changed. We now just have the URL inside a variable. That's it. Nothing has, nothing really has changed over here. Perfect. Now, what I want to do is I want to, after the URL, I also want to pass some params, right? And in your, HTTP client in Angular, we can use, we can, there's a key called params, and we can then create our params over here with the help of new HTTP params. That's it. That's how you create parameters that you need to pass in Angular. Now, you could all, obviously create another variable and store it there, but let me just do it right here. And the param is order by, this is the key. And now we need to pass what we need to order by. And we need to order by email, right? That has to be passed in as a string in inverted commas. Again, that's just how the API works. First of all, let's see if this works. So let me go here. I can go back to my browser. Let me make it full screen. And I can actually bring it over here. That would be much more convenient. Isn't it? And here we go. Here we have the, UI, uh, the API requests. And, and by the way, this website is totally least loaded. So if you go to another page, you see a new model is downloaded. And if you are interested to know how we do this, well, go check out our other videos in the playlist because it is awesome. It is highly efficient website. So let me now just try a dummy login. And on this login, we should receive all the users, but this time they should be ordered by email. Let's see if that works. Let me go here. So this is p at the rate p.com, dummy at gmail, and p at h.com. So we don't know if everything worked over here or not. So let's try to add an equal to here because that's what we want, right? The order by is something that we are forced to do if we want to apply any filter. But there's something interesting that we could notice here. As you can see, we have our params added over here like this. So this is question mark, order by, and then the email. So that looks perfect. And, in the, and this is the payload. So as you can see, query string parameters order by email. So this is what we wanted to send and this is what we did send. So that is again, perfect. Now let me go and also add an equal to and see if things still work. So I would say dot set, you can pass multiple params like this in Angular. And this time the key we want to use is equal to 
And then it will also have a value for that I'll use backticks because it's gonna be a variable. And the variable over here that you actually want to use, let me make it full screen so that it's easier to follow. The variable we will use is login form dot email or dot value dot email, sorry. The form and now we are used going to the value of the form and then finally to the email. Now, as I said, we need to pass it in strings. Like uh, we have to add inverted commas, but let's see what happens if we don't do that. Firebase will probably give us an error. Let's check it out. Okay, clear that out. We add b dot um, Here you go. It gives us an error. We did pass both the things, but as you can see, inverted commas are missing here. And therefore it says index field must be a JSON primitive. And in JSON, everything is a string, right? So you have to pass it like this, and then it will work. Let's do again. Let's try it again. No, Chrome, I don't want to save the password. It's a dummy website. And there you go, no errors this time, and we just got a single email. So things are looking great. Now, what if I add an email that then doesn't exist in our database? Let's see what happens then. So I'll write p at b.com, and this time we get an empty array, no properties or empty object. So that's perfect. That means our filter is working. So we have finally added filters to our Firebase request in our Angular application. So everything looks great. We added the rules and we updated the API. Now, finally, if we have a successful response, then what I want is, as I already told you, I want to redirect and go to a different page. That's all I want, right? So over here, now we won't get users. We would just get a single user, first of all. And here I can say if user, we then print things out just to test it out if, it's, if it still works, right? If it works, then we obviously move forward. That's that's the way I do. I always test things at every increment so that finally, once we are ready and everything is working, then I can move forward. I don't like to change 100 lines of code and then test in the end and don't know what might have broken. So this time it was printed, but if I pass an incorrect email, clear it out, it was still printed. It's an empty array. So now I would say if user email. Actually, you know what? I want to see what I get. What's my, what's the response that I get once I do the query? So if I do a login like this, I get a key inside a key. I have something. Okay. So what I can do over here is if uh, object Object dot keys dot length is greater than zero. So that's how we know that we are finally getting the object. Then print out the user. Uh, it's again, this is just optional thing that I'm doing. I just want to make my website more robust. So I'm just checking if I actually got a response and only then I'm moving forward. This time things are printed, that's perfect. Next time it should not be printed. If I pass an incorrect email and there you go, nothing was printed because I got an empty object. So that is, that is just perfect. Now, if I get something, all I want is, and again, all I want over here, this is not authentication. I'm just trying to navigate my website from one page to the other. All I want is to go from one page to the other. And for that, we need some inputs. We need router and we need activated route. Again, we covered these things in great detail in those in the videos where we discussed it. So again, if you are interested in any of that, go check out our videos and I'm sure you'll learn hopefully a lot. So we want a router, let's import that. We want an activated route. Router helps us navigate from one page to the other and activated route gives us, tells us where we are right now. And based on that, we move to another page. So what we are saying is, let's see what page are we on. We are on auth login, right? That's the page we are on right now. So what we want and where do we want to go? We want to go here where we have nothing. So 
all I can do is I actually don't even need activated route over here because I know exactly where I want to go, right? And over here, I'll just pass my route, which is nothing. I want to go to an empty route. So let's see if this works. And I think it probably should work. So at the moment, we are not really checking password. If I log in and it's successful, there we go. We went to a perfect page. As you can see, we got the user in the response, and then we went to the home page. Let's try that again one last time, and then we call it a day. I'll pass an incorrect email. Nothing happened, right? We could, and obviously, we could add some red marks. We could add a notification that, you know, uh, incorrect username or password. We'll do all of that good stuff later. Right now, the focus is just on Firebase and navigating once we have a successful response. So in my network, you see I got empty objects. And finally, if I pass in the correct email, we go to the home page, which is just awesome. I'm really happy. I hope you learned something new. I hope we covered some great concepts. You know more about Firebase today that than you knew tomorrow, than you knew yesterday, sorry. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let us know how you like the video in comments down below. Ask your questions. We are we would be happy to answer them. And Keep following our Angular Live course videos on YouTube because we are trying to build an amazing website live in front of you so that any mistakes we do, we fix the mistakes in front of you. I'm putting myself on the spot so that you can learn the best way how we actually code, how professionals who work in industry actually code. We hope you can learn something from that. And if you like all of our hard work, give us a hit, give us a hit on the like button, subscribe to our channel, and